it's a Monday morning, it's quite cold, uh, but at school we had such a fantastic rain and Luke is back in class, so it's all good. Um, remembering there's a test on Friday, I managed to push this one, one day ahead, but uh, the bad news is that we also have trig graphs to do. Uh, I hope you spent an hour or two in the weekend to just kind of revise, make sure that you know all the graphs of all these families function and as they are laughing. Okay? We'll see, we'll see. All right. <laughs> anyway, um, now what we're doing this week, okay, we, they, we went through all the graphs, all the families. But what we did in the last week or two, we, um, I gave you an equation and then you had to sketch it. Now we're doing the opposite. Okay? We have a graph and we need to figure out the, the equation. Okay? So we've done it with linear, we still need to do uh, quadratic today, and then we'll do exponential and hyperbola. Part of it actually we've done. We've done it as, as I told you, actually I did some of that work, but not all of it. So something like this, for example, we did do. And I just want to check with you, we'll do it quickly, it's not going to take too long. So that is obviously, I, you know, I won't tell you that this function looks like this. But when you look at this, you know, this is called a parabola. So you need to know it's a quadratic function. Okay? That's one of the things that are hard in a test scenario, because in a test scenario, you're going to have all these different graphs. In the lesson, now we're just going to work with quadratic. So if you understand that in a test, you need to figure out, ah, that is a parabola, so it's going to look like that. Okay? So we have a square, that's why it's called a quadratic. So in other words, we need to figure out A and Q. Q straight away, we know what is Q, right? What is Q? Minus two. Okay, so I'll, I'll give that. Uh, let's say this is a gem. So this will be g of x. So I know that g of x will be a x squared minus two. Okay, because that's the y-intercept, right? So I still don't know what a is. How would I know it? Which is that. So we can make this. We substitute, right? We're going to substitute this point. I can't substitute this point. Remember, I did tell you something really important last week. Okay. There's two things you need to figure out, A and Q. So you need two bits of information. The first bit of information uh, you, you get from the y intercept. It's minus 2. So you know that is Q. The second bit of information you need to figure out A. So I can't use that point again. I can't put uh, the point 0 minus 2. Right? This point is 0 minus 2. That's not going to help you. If you put 0 here, 0 squared is 0. 0 times A is 0. So you're not going to have A. So we must put that point. So I'm going to say minus 4 equals um, a times 3 squared minus 2. I substitute 3 minus 4. Okay, so minus 4 equals 9a squared. 9a, not 9a squared. 9a minus 2. 9a equals minus 2. a equals minus 2 over 9. Okay? And then don't forget when you've got these questions in the test, don't forget, eventually you need to write down the formula, because that would really be the answer, or the question. Write down the formula of this, uh, uh, of this graph, okay? So don't forget to substitute it. All right, are we okay with this? Okay, I'm going to see that magic now. I'm going to see, show you how I do that magic. I'll tell you a secret how I do it. Abra, Kadabra, Kazalu. Okay, so the first, oh, I forgot to say, I forgot that one. <laughs> okay, so well, that was quite bad. Uh, right. Okay, so the first quite a problem we did, actually we've done it before, it shouldn't be a problem, okay? Now, now this one is a little bit different, because here I gave you a point, like I did on the green graph, but I didn't give, give you the y intercept. If you don't know what the y intercept, if I don't know what that is, I can't tell what q is. So, but then you can say to me, all right, it's fine, I've got, I've got that point. I know that 2, if this is 2, I know that the y coordinate is 0. So that's an x intercept, the y is 0. And this one is minus 2, 0 as well. Okay? So I've got actually three points here. I've got too many. I only really need two bits of information to get into. I've got too many. Well, I'm going to show you that actually you don't have too many. Okay? These two points are actually the same. You can't really uh, get extra information. So I've asked the guys here what we can do, and they said, oh, it's not a problem. Look, you substitute, instead of x, you substitute q, and the y, the f of x, will be 0, because that's, that's what happened to the y here, 0. So let's do that, okay? We'll put 0 instead of f of x. a times 2 squared 
less q. So that means 0 equal p squared is 4a plus q. Okay? So if I'm using the point 2, 0, okay, the point 2, 0 will give you that. Now let's try and use now this point, minus 2, 0. Let's see what happens now. Well, okay, so the y is 0. Then I write a times, instead of 2 squared, I'm going to write minus 2 squared. Because the x now is minus 2 squared, plus 2. Okay? But what do I get here? Okay? Well, it's the same thing, okay? because minus 2 squared is simply 4. So I'm getting just one equation. It's not wrong, nothing wrong with that. But I'm just showing you that those two points didn't add anything to each other. They, they give me the same equation for a and q. So I've got one equation for a and q, but from one equation, with these two variables, I can't determine. I don't know what a or what q is. I need another equation. So how can I make another equation? What else is better information I've got here, which I haven't used yet? Three and two. The three and two. So I can uh, substitute instead of uh, f of x, I'll put 2. So I'll write 2. So this is the point 3, 2. 2 equal a times 3 squared plus q. So I've got 2 equal 9a plus q. Now that is the second bit of information that I've got. With these two equations, now I can find it. And we will have, I don't think we've done it, solving equation, two equations. We will do it sometime this year, but I'm not going to do it now because I think you agree with me that this is a little bit difficult. I've got two equations. I can somehow figure out which one is what is q and what is a, but you don't need to do it right now. It's possible, very possible, and we will learn how to do that later on this year, but there's a much easier way. Well, that'll be in our case. This will be in your case, but I'm not going to ask you to solve it this way. I'll show you how to solve it. Let's try and do this magic now. Abacadabra shtemis. Wow, that's amazing. I worked this time. Okay, right. So how would I ask you to solve these things? Okay. What you need to know is that to write this equation like this, a x squared plus q, there is another way, another form of writing a quadratic equation. And it is writing it by this way. And I'll explain what these symbols mean. A is the same A. No, it's the same A. X is the same as the X here. So instead of Q, we've got these X1 and X2. What are X1 and X2? They're not variables. They are specific numbers for a specific graph. Okay? X1 and X2 are what we call the roots of the quadratic equation. And I don't think you've heard that word root. These are basically your x-intercepts. These are your x-intercepts. So for this, I'm just going to draw it for, for this equation, okay? For this specific equation, okay? A, I don't know what it is. What are your roots or, or the, the x-intercepts here? 2 and minus 2. So instead of x1, one, I'll write 2. Instead of x2, I'll write minus 2. So in other words, it's minus, minus 2. So x minus 2 and x minus, minus 2. But what is x minus, minus 2? x plus 2. Okay? So I can straight away turn to x plus 2. Now, why? I just told you that, that, these, that we can write it like this. But I want to explain why is that. Okay? Why can we write this equation as f a times x minus the first intercept times x minus the, the second intercept? Does anyone maybe have a, a clue? Yeah? No, okay. What happened in x intercept? What happens to the y when the x equal to the x to the x intercept? What happens to the y? What is the y in the x intercept? Zero. Zero. Okay. Let's put x equal to. If I put x equal to here, x equal to, what will I get in this bracket? I'll put two instead of x. What is two plus two? Four. If I put 2 instead of x here, what will I get? 0. 2 minus 2 is 0, right? So if I put 2 here, okay, and 2 there, okay, then I'm going to get a times 0 times 4. How much is a times 0 times 4? 0. So you see, when we put the first x-intercept, okay, I get a y0, which is what I'm supposed to get when I put x equal to x-intercept, right? Yeah? Let's put
put the second x in this end. Let's put minus 2 here and minus 2 there. So it's going to be a times, what is minus 2 times minus 2? Or a is minus 2 minus 2? What is minus 2 minus 2? Minus 4. And minus 2 plus 2? 0. So I'm multiplying a by minus 4 by 0. I will again get 0. So whenever I put the x-intercept, I will get a 0, which is what am I supposed to get, isn't it? Okay? Right? Now, if you think this looks extremely different to that, it's not that different because I've got, if I open these brackets, I've got x squared, which is here. I've got a bunch of x, because remember, these are numbers. These are numbers. Okay? So x times something, x times something, which will cancel each other. So never mind what I actually just said. Now. Don't worry about that. Okay? Um, and eventually I've got these two numbers, 2 and 2, which will give me a number. When I multiply together, I'll get a number, which is what I'm supposed to be getting. Okay? So I know this has been a little bit planky, okay? But let me try and kind of recap everything. Okay? How do you solve problems like this? Okay? You first of all write it in this form. A, x minus something, x minus something. What are these numbers? These are the x-intercepts. So in this case, 2 and minus 2. Okay? Now, as it stands right now, okay, it looks very, very different to that. Okay? So we need to just FOIL it. How do you know how to FOIL it? Okay? So f of x equal a. What is x minus 2 times x plus 2? Okay, we learned the formula for that. Okay, the guy's actually got it here. Okay, this is the difference of the square. So it's going to be x squared minus 2 squared. Or it's minus 2 squared. I can probably write it for you. Don't mind. Okay, now I'm not finished yet. Okay, that means f of x equal ax squared minus 4a. Okay, you see now I straight away, okay, found out, uh, uh, I've got an equation now of f of x just with a. I just have one variable missing. I don't have a p or anything like that. How would I still find out that, that a? Eh? What can I do now? That's a good question. Which point? Yeah. Which one? Yeah. I, I, I still, still missing a. So I've used these bit, two bits of information to figure out an equation for f of x, but just missing still one letter. So I've used these two bits of information. Which information did I want to use? Very good. So now I can substitute 3, 2, I'm going to put in here 2, I'm going to put here 3, okay? and I'm going to write 2 equal a, 3 squared minus 4 a. Now I'll be able to figure out a, okay? So, um, 2 equal 9a minus 4 a, 2 equal 5 a, a equal 2 over 5 a. Okay? And now, I can just put that straight into here. I'm going to put, instead of a, I'm going to put 2 over 5. Instead of a, I'm going to put 2 over 5, which is, in this case, 8 over 5. Okay, I didn't choose very nice numbers, so I've got an equation. It's not whole numbers, but that's fine. I know it's not easy, guys. I'll do one more example, okay? Okay, we, guys, we're going to do one more example, and I'm also going to introduce something that I didn't mentioned before, and that is the symmetry, or how do they call it, the symmetry, uh, the axes of symmetry. And we didn't really touch on that, it's very easy, but I just need to say it. Some of our graph are symmetrical. I think you know what symmetry is, okay? So it's like there's, uh, if I fold, let's say, all this, I fold that over to here, I will just cross that line. You know what symmetry is, right? Okay? Now, what you can be asking the test is to write down the equation of the line of symmetry. Where is the line of symmetry? Is this the, is this the line of symmetry? No, because this top is not the same as this bottom. So where is the line of symmetry? Is this the line of symmetry? Is this the same as that? No. Georgia? Okay. But wait, here, here, here. It's the y. It's the y-axis. This is the line of symmetry. Okay. So the line of symmetry in this case... And this is the kind of question they ask. Line of symmetry, okay, is going to be the y-axis. Now, if you write y-axis, I don't know, it depends how strict we are. 
The y-axis has a name. How do we write down the y-axis? What, what equation does it have? It's not y equals zero, because y equals zero is actually the x-axis. On along this line, y is equal to zero. So what is x equal to zero? So if they ask you, what's the line of symmetry? In fact, I can tell you now, for grade 10 maths, it's changing in grade uh, 11. But as far as we're concerned, all our parabola, the line of symmetry is always x equals zero. Next year, we're going to, unfortunately for you, going to start as horizontal shift. Now we just have a vertical shift. Okay? All right. Now we've got this bit of information. We want to find out a and p. We want to write that the equation uh, in this form. When you are not giving, I'm not giving you the vertical shift. This is the point here. But I'm giving you the x-intercept. We're simply going to use this form. Okay. So f of x is going to be equal to a. I don't know what that a is. I do know what x1 and x2. x1 and x2 are basically your x intercepts. So what should be, can you tell me what's the formula? How should I write it? It's going to be x minus something and x plus something, right? So x minus 4 and x plus 4. Can you see that? Okay, it's always going to be that case. I've written x1 and x2 as if they're different, and next year they will be different. But in fact, for us, for grade 10 maths, okay, the x-intercepts are always the same, just with a different minus. So really, I can say it's always going to be x minus 1 and x plus 1, where x1 are your x-intercepts. It's always going to be the same. Before it was x minus 2 and x plus 2, now it's x minus 4, x plus 4. Does that make sense? That's the very important. That's the most important thing. Okay, now I just fold it. So I'm going to write a, exactly, x squared minus, let's do it straight away, x squared minus, minus 16. In other words, f of x is equal a x squared minus 16 a. Okay? Which now is written similar to that. I know you've got a here, maybe I shouldn't use it because it's not the same a. Okay? But it basically you have a letter in front of x squared and a free number. How would I find that a? What do I need to do now? 115, okay? So I'm going to put 15 here, and I'm going to put 1 over here, which is quite useful because it's 1 squared. That's easy, it's just 1. Minus 16a. So 15 equal a minus 16a, okay? And that means 15 equal minus 15a. Right? a minus 16a is minus 15a. And that means a is equal to? Minus 1. And then I want to uh, I want to just put it in there the equation. Okay, uh, I'll write it down. This is the f that I've got. Okay? This is the function I've got so far. And now I'm just going to simply use the a. So f of x equal minus x squared plus sixteen. Okay, minus x squared plus sixteen. Okay, why did I get a negative sign? We'll add it a little bit. Why, why is it? Good thing that I've got this negative sign. How can I know from the graph that I should get it? It's a sad face only tells me. It's not just because it's Monday morning that yeah, it's sad, okay? Right? It's a sad face. You can see a sad smile. Mine. Okay? Now if I ask you, what is this thing equal to? You can tell me straight away. What is the y value? What's the y intercept? 16. 16? Well, that's easy. Okay? You can see that it's plus 16, so that must be 16. Excellent. Right, let's do some work. Yeah, I think